Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Imperial Spells and Steam. We'll also be taking a look at Imperial as above, so below the expansion. This game, with what I have here, comes included with a solo mode, one to eight players, takes roughly 20 minutes per player, and is for ages 13 and up. And in the game, you are going to be selecting a company, selecting a captain, and eventually getting some specialists. Your objective, fill out your board by placing down train cars, gathering new uh, upgrade abilities that will allow you to place more down, and eventually gathering goods as you place down your locations. Utilizing those goods to deliver to cities to give these little guys here, and fill your board up to a certain point to which the game ends. Of course, the other way to end the game is by emptying your amount of pool or your pool of train cars. And if that happens, that will trigger the end of the game as well with a final delivery. And you'll check to see who wins. Players win based on the number of goods they've delivered, plus any of the placards that they've gained and any other additional bonus points, as well as, of course, if you want to include awards and other deluxe components, you may do so. Uh, this game is all about trains, gathering resources, creating more trains, and delivering your resources to these cities here. There's also, for As Above, So Below, a metro expansion, which will include these little metro stations, which you can place on your board, which are similar to cities in how you deliver to them, but they're kind of like a wild city, as well as they have some unique type of resource or, or some type of function that they have to gain you even more benefits along the way in the game Imperial. Will you make the best train car by completing your company's objective? Uh, will you gather the most resources and deliver to the most cities? Find out in this wonderful game by level 99. To set up the game Imperial Spells and Steam, you are basically going to first decide how many players are playing. And based on that number, you're then going to create your board. Your board could be either three, four, five, or even six tiles long. And in fact, if you're playing with the seven and eight player expansion, it'll be even bigger. You'll need to follow the rules to determine how to set these boards up because each board is selected differently with different sides of tiles. For instance, in my two player game here, I have three tiles and I'm using either all A sided tiles or all B sided tiles. I'll place them down in this coordination here. And then I'm going to place a city on each of the city spaces. Check the city's color on the bottom to determine which type of city it is. Yellow city, black, blue, white, red, and green. Then take your resources. If you're playing with the deluxe components, use the little plastic pieces. And if you're playing with the base games components, they have little cardboard components that you can utilize as well. Place them down on each of the different locations on the board. The only spaces that will not have resources on them are going to be the wasteland spaces, which are basically these little purple spaces. But everything else should have at least one resource, and every city space should have a city. And to make sure you've done it correctly, you should have at least one of each type of city on your board by the time you finish your setup. When choosing characters, you'll choose first the company and then you'll be choosing characters. Now, there's a number of ways to do this. I suggest for your first game, just go ahead and follow the game book's rules for setting up a less competitive variant of the game, but you'll be selecting a green mat or a blue mat or a yellow mat, and you'll be selecting one of the two characters if you have the expansion or the one character that goes with it. There's also wild captains that you could choose along the way um, when you're gathering the expansions, as well as random train cars that can be added to your game board to change how play has been done. Once you have your main game board and your captain, you're going to be getting train cars of that captain's color. You're going to be getting a pawn, which you'll select and place on the starting space of your grid, and you'll be getting a certain number of mana crystals equal to your company's starting mana. In most cases, this will be five. And that's pretty much all you'll need to do for your player setup and the main game board. The rest of the stuff is pretty simple. Make sure you set out your resources within reach of all players. There are these six different colored resources. You're going to have your uh, black, blue, green, white, red, and yellow. Place them within reach of all players. Then go ahead and select rewards if you would like, if you're playing the advanced mode, and have the rest of the crystals within reach of all players. You may as well need to have these wasteland tiles somewhere within reach, so have those near. 
Select specialists based on the number of players. In a two player game, it is two plus the number, plus one. So number of players plus one for each of the different colored specialists. You have the brown, green, and purple. Select these at random and place these here in these three little bins, which players will gather. The rest of the specialists, which there are a lot of, you can go ahead and set aside. You won't be using them for this game. Then you're going to have your train cars. You'll start with six on your available market space, and then the rest of them are shuffled, and they are also placed in this little area here just beyond the market, so they're within easy reach of when you need to reshuffle them. The rest of the cities you will no longer need, but make sure that you set up each city based on the requirements of players. So on the main game board here, as you can see, there's these little things on top. In a two player game, you'll need a double, triple, and quadruple script here. Make sure you place them in here so that they're within reach and easy to see for all players. You won't need anything else. That's pretty much everything you'll need for the game. However, if you are playing with the Metro expansion, you're going to be including one of these metros, and it'll be somewhere in the middle of the game board attached on top of these boards here, which will change the different types of resources. They'll be kind of removed, and instead you'll get these guys here. And these guys function like cities in every way, but are not called cities for game rules. So they in purpose cities, but not in essence. And they'll have a special ability. So they function like cities, and they have a unique ability, but they're not considered cities when utilizing certain effects. Then you're basically ready to begin the game, Imperial Spells and Steam. Give somebody the token to go first and they can begin the game. To begin the game, you'll start by selecting the first player and having them place down their train cars. You will select your starting location and you will place one train car on that starting location. Then you will place an additional train car in a network adjacent space. There are two spaces, network adjacent, which is any space adjacent to your network, and in-network, which is any space where you currently have a train residing in it. After you've placed your two cars adjacent to each other in any spaces that you want, provided you follow the main rule of placing it in your home space, each player will do the same. Then it will come back to the first player, and that player is going to take their first passive action and then one of the two main actions, and they will pass and it will continue going along in that way until the game ends, triggering with either A, getting enough of these guys here, the little scripts that you will need, or B, your train cars running out. On your turn, the first thing you will do is select if you'd like to use your three specialists and or your leader. You can use these in the following ways. The leader can be flipped over and his ability or her ability may then be used. B, you can use your engineer. The same way you would use your leader, you would flip the engineer over and utilize the ability until it can be flipped face up again. C, you'll have things like this guy here. This is like, I believe, the uh, conductor. The conductor can be used, but only once a game. Once he or she is flipped face down, you will never be able to flip it face up again, and you're never able to get more than one of each type of these units. The third one is going to be the Ticketmaster. This is a character that has a passive or active ability that can be used throughout the game as long as it is able to be used based on the rules. So you'll have these four spaces, no more than one of each unit, and you can utilize any of them that you can or are willing to or want to use just before you take one of your two main actions. There are two main actions. Action one is move and activate, and action two is administrate. We'll talk about the main one, we'll go through the whole thing, and then we'll talk about administrating and how that works. Moving and activating is your first action you can take of the two. And to move, you're simply able to move between one and four spaces. The first space is free. The second will cost you one. If you want to go three, it will cost you three. If you want to go four, it will cost you six. And when I refer to cost, I'm referring to mana. Each player will get five mana to start the game off. And this is the resource they will be using to activating train cars and to moving this little guy here, which is considered your pawn. If I wanted to activate this guy and move him two spaces, it's going to cost me one mana. I would set it aside because I will be getting these guys back. Once I moved, I am then going to have the option to activate. I can activate one, two, or three tiles. To activate one, it's free. Two will cost me one, and three will cost me three mana. Each of these train tiles may also cost me mana as well. They will have a cost in the upper right hand corner if they're going to cost me additional other than what the activate costs already costs. 
when I activate one of these spaces, I will do what they say. And for the most part, they're going to let me place a train down in a network adjacent space. For instance, mine says that I can place a train car in either the blue or red space. And I'll go ahead and choose a blue space, taking one of my trains and placing it in a network adjacent space, thusly forming a small little V. And that would basically be my turn. I would move and I would activate. I would move and I would activate. Spending mana and using the abilities of the train cars. Train cars can have a lot of functions. They can let me place in any space I want. They can give me mana back. They can let me place train cars in certain areas. Some are going to let me place multiple train cars at a cost of higher mana requirements. Some are going to allow me to gain specialists or flip over my specialists. And others are just simply going to give me bonus mana or the ability to place resources on my locations that are in my network. When I get to the end of the line, so I have moved and activated enough times to where I finally got to the last space on my board here. There are two things that happen. The first thing that happens is I can deliver. In order to deliver, you must be adjacent to a city. Additionally, you must have resources in your network in order to give that city. So for instance, if I'm next to this water city, I'm network adjacent to a water city, and I have cars, that are in network and have little water resources, I can turn these in as soon as I reach this area. I may only do this once and I have to choose one city and or if you are playing with the metros, a metro. Based on the amount of resources I turn in, that will give me one of these guys here. If I turn in three, uh, that will give me a double victory point token. If I turn in two, it will give me a single. And if I turn in four, it will give me a quadruple. So there are certain ones that will give me more victory points are based on the resources that I turn in. After I have turned in a number of resources that are in network, selected a city that is network adjacent, turned them in and gained one of these guys here, I may then perform one of the three end of the line abilities. The first end of the line ability is I can gain all of my mana back and I'll gain a bonus mana. So if I start the beginning of the game, I have five. In this case, any of the mana I spent will come back to me and I will again gain one bonus mana, which will get me to six. If I don't want to do that, instead I can do this next one here. This next one here is going to A, let me go through one of these three decks of specialists, choose one of them and place it on my board, face up, place the rest back and refresh my two main specialists, my engineer and my captain. That way I can use them again when my turn comes around. The third option I can take is gain two train cars. I can take two train cars from the supply there and place them down on my game board. In order to place train cars uh, in the third row, I must first fill the second row. And in order to place train cars in the top row, I must have all train car spaces filled in with previously placed train cars. I may never place train cars in the third row if I don't have a full set in my second row, and the same is said for the first row. These guys will give me additional activation slots when I move slash activate. And of course, they will cost more when I choose to activate them, and I can activate them in any order that I'd like. That is all the main things that happen with the end of the line and the delivery. I would then move back to the start of the board and continue the game from there. Moving, activating, end of the line, deliver, choose one of the three options, and go back to the front. The next action is administrate. To administrate is pretty simple. Let's say you spent a number of mana and you need that mana back. Administration might be your thing. You'll gain all the mana that you previously spent. You will flip over your engineer and your captain to then perform their abilities again if you'd like, and you'll get a free train car, which you can then place on your board. That's pretty much how Activate works. It's pretty simple. Get mana, flip your guys over, gain a train car. If for some reason your train car uh, supply runs out and now there's only two left, in that case, you'll actually be removing these guys here and then refreshing the train stack, giving you six new train cars. These will then be utilized up until there are only two of these remaining and it will rinse and repeat. Thus, you're going to always have unique new train cars that will show up in the supply that you can purchase. Let's talk about transferring. Transferring is pretty simple. If I'm at a location 
network adjacent to one of these three locations, I can move over them. The three locations are pretty simple. One is the enemy's train cars. The next is a city. And the third is a wasteland. If, for instance, I moved and I activated it, and the space would allow me to move to a yellow space, but I can't get to one, or the one I want to get to is too far away, I could choose to transfer. I could spend mana, and we'll talk about the wasteland first. I could spend four mana to activate a wasteland and take a train car and place it on the yellow space that I want to place on, that I have activated for my train car, and thusly it will let me kind of jump over that space. For three mana, I can do the same thing, but I can do it with a city. So for instance, if I wanted to move to a green space, but I needed to get over the city, I could spend three mana and thus they move a train car over this blue city, placing it kind of on the opposite end. And the third one is I can transfer between enemy train cars. If, for instance, I have trains that are network adjacent to an enemy car, and I want to get through those cars to a space, for instance, I wanted to get to a green space and I have the, uh, pawn here and I was able to place on a green space, I could spend two mana for each train car I'd like to bypass. So I could spend two and four mana and I could transfer my train car all the way across the enemy trains or our rivals, if you like to call them that, uh, to a space that I can now get to. So transferring will be utilized throughout the game when you need to get to certain spaces and you have the mana, but you don't have the availability with the spaces that you currently have access to for your train cars. And those are all the main actions. You will A, activate one of your main specialists slash captain, B, choose to move and activate, or you could choose the, I guess, BA, and that would, this would be BB, you <laughs> choose to uh, administrate. Uh, and you'll just continue doing so, utilizing your transfers. Whenever you get to the end of the line, make a delivery only once, and then choose one of the three options, refreshing your mana, utilizing your specialist and getting a new one, or just gaining new train cars. And up until the point where either A, all of the trains in your bin run out, or B, you're able to get enough of these to fill up the board based on the number of players to end the game. When somebody fills up their boards or runs out of trains, that is gonna trigger the end game, in which case everyone gets equal number of turns. So if you're going, you started, uh, and I finished the game, that would trigger an ending. But if you went first and you finished the game, I would get one extra turn. Then each player will get to deliver. Each player will get to deliver one time. They'll check to see any network adjacent cities they have and if they have any resources that they can use to deliver, and they'll get to deliver one time, gaining these little tokens here. You'll calculate your points by checking to see how many resources you delivered, how many of these guys you got, and overall if there's any other bonus active ability points you can gain or uh, victory points you can gain, as well as these awards. Some awards will give you a victory points for having trains network adjacent to cities. Others might have victory points for having the same number of these little guys here of the same color and having the most of them. And there's a wide variety of these different awards that you can add or activate throughout the game that will give additional victory points. As you can see, here's just one little stack of them. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game is the best conductor slash best company in Imperial Spells and Steam. Okay, let's talk about the game. So I rank Imperial along the lines of, I guess, Ticket to Ride as far as difficulty. Now this game is far more complex in what you can do, but as far as simplicity goes, this is actually quite a simple game. It's almost a little misleading based on how much stuff there is and like the amount of components that there is uh, and options that there are as far as what is important in this game. In reality, what you're doing is activating your guys once in a while and then choosing to either move this guy and activate a space or administrating by refreshing your stuff. And then eventually you'll be hitting the end of the line, turning in resources and gathering these little guys here from the top of cities to score victory points. And when you have enough, you end the game. There are certain cases in which you'll run out of these guys here. Usually it's going to be in larger games with larger area on the game board. There's a wide variety of these train cars you can get that will give you more activation spaces along the way that kind of progress your turn and make you a little bit more powerful as the game goes on. But in actuality, it's really that straightforward. I guess the most complex nature of the game is the ability to transfer, moving from certain areas and considering your options when you do so. But yes, overall, you're basically trying to have as much mana as you possibly can to 
utilize the things you want to utilize while still maintaining everything else and placing down train cars to thus access the different resources to turn in for victory points. Another cool thing about this game too is your ability to kind of utilize your specific captain and that specific board to do what it kind of wants you to do. You can of course kind of go against the grain and change things up, but in, 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 in generality speaking, uh, these guys kind of have a way in which they want you to function with them. But even though they function a specific way, that doesn't like lean you towards having to do just one specific way to victory, it just garners you a better path or better strategy to success. These are the specialists and they are awesome. Uh, my favorite is the passive specialist, but I don't mind the other two as well. The once a game, I almost never use because I'm so nervous about when I want to use it because then it'll be gone. But if I don't utilize it, then I just wasted the potential that that character has. So I highly suggest you take advantage of this guy when you can, so you don't miss misusing its opportunity. Um, the two main ones, the uh, engineer and the leader, these are main because you're utilizing these a lot. You're flipping them over, you're uh, flipping them down, gaining their abilities. Some are going to let you place track down or wastelands or the ability to kind of, this one here is really cool. You transfer once for free on your turn as long as you're moving and activating. Specialists are awesome. There are a ton of specialists just in the green stack alone. These guys here. Uh, you are uh, surveyors, I don't know. The, these guys here, uh, there is a bunch. So even when you're playing an eight player game, you may or may not have seen the specialists that you're gonna be choosing throughout the game. There is a variety of ways to play this game. You have the solo mode for the game if you're playing with the uh, as above, so below expansion. The solo mode is actually pretty cool. It's gonna have this deck of cards here. You're going to start with uh, the specific company that you want to play against, which has five cards. And then there are upgrade cards that you will add to the deck. You'll be drawing one of these cards on their turn and performing the actions. And then once they run out of cards, you'll add one of these guys, thusly making them a little bit more powerful. And even the specific automata deck that you can play against, and you can play against multiple decks as well, uh, there are a wide variety of different company trains that you can utilize to play against. So that you can even play a cooperative game where it's you and your friend playing against two automata decks. You can go, okay, we're, I'm gonna be blue and red, and blue and your red, and I'll we'll play against green and white, and then we'll just place their upgrade deck here. And now we've got two unique characters that we can play against. So the solo mode can be experienced in a multiple, a multitude of different ways. Uh, we'll talk about the as, a blow, as Above, So Below expansion. This pr provides you with a lot of additional content, which are going to be the different types of specialists, uh, different awards, there are going to be unique types of captains you can gain, and then the mainly the thing is the metros. These are like city-like type tiles that you'll be placing down on the game board in some way, which you can turn resources into and then gain a benefit. And these are double-sided, so you'll have a multitude of different types of metros, and they'll give you abilities and benefits. Uh, some of them will give you the ability to place a tile down or place a, a train down in any location that you want, which is very powerful when you turn things into them. Some of them will have higher valued victory point markers than other uh, cities you might go to. And sometimes they're just gonna be easier to get to comparatively to other cities, especially if a city is very far away from you. So it's a nice little addition to the game without making it that much more complex. You have wild captains. These are captains that you can add to any uh, board here, and they also provide their own unique bonus train tile, which you'll see that every board has uh, the top five and one at the bottom right, uh, the middle bottom right, I guess, which it has their own specific function based on the, the captain. Well, these guys also have their own as well. We'll also talk about the multiplayer aspect of the game. Well, as you know, there are eight players, and each of the players have their own boards, and each of the players have up to two captains you can choose from and six, uh, eight different colors. As well as the board will get larger. And with each expansion you buy, come with these tiles here. They are lettered so that you can determine how you're going to be setting the game board up. And of course, the game becomes a large table hog when you are playing with six or more players. Heck, even a two player game is quite large. Okay. So let's go into gameplay. You now know about the different types of multiplayer aspects to the game and a little bit about the, um, the metros of the as above, so below. 
The setup for this game is long. Maybe a little longer than I'd like, actually. Uh, you, when you place down these boards here, you have to place all the cities and place all these tokens in based on the players and uh, place one of each resource on each tile other than the purple one, and that takes quite a bit of time. You'll be choosing these two awards if you want to play with awards, which I strongly recommend you do. Changes the game up quite a bit. Um, you'll be placing out these guys here for your deck. You'll be setting up your board, which is actually quite quite easy in comparison, and then selecting your, and there's a lot of selecting that is going to be done throughout the game, and then giving a player the first player marker. If you don't mind a bit of a table hog, and you don't mind the setup for the game, then Imperial is the game for you. Imperial is an excellent train game. It's going to appeal to the Euro fans because there is almost no luck in the game. This is a pure strategy game. Um, it's going to appeal to those people who like area control and resource gathering and pickup and delivery aspects to it. It's just got a whole lot to offer. The main base game comes with a lot of nice stuff. Now these mats, of course, are the, uh, there's like a deluxified version, which is going to come with nice big cardboard mats. But the main game mats are basically going to be like the thinner plastic ones. And even those are nice. Even those are good. Uh, those, I played with those previously with a friend of mine, and I had a great time with those mats as well. Now, of course, these are better. And if you really, really like this game and you're going to play it quite a bit, then I do suggest you get the deluxe versions because not only are these mats excellent, but instead of the uh, cardboard token, Tokens, which work just fine. Um, the tokens, I mean, they're not like anything spectacular or anything. They're just little cardboard tokens like these guys here. You'll get really beautiful uh, miniatures that are actually kind of colored as well. So the rocks are like a gray and um, kind of a, a darker gray, some white in there. And then the white are like barrels with kind of like this toxin with like some pink residue around that. They did a really good job of the little tokens here. Um, the way in which the setup is going to look at the other game is beautiful. Uh, now, like I said, the table game is a table hog, but what is here and when you see it, when you're walking by, it's going to have great table presence. The game looks good, it feels good, and people are going to want to play just when they walk by and see what Imperial, Imperial is doing. Uh, the gameplay. This game is simple, like I said. In nature, you're going to be moving and activating or administrating, being able to transfer, utilizing all sorts of things. This game is going to play differently each and every single time. There's different strategies you're going to have, different uh, available train cars are going to pop up, and where you place them matters, and which ones you activate matters, and in what order when you activate these guys here. There's a lot that goes on, but, but when you're playing the game and you're very new, you don't have to care about a lot of things. You can focus on just one thing and learn that functionality. And maybe you're going to focus on getting as much mana as you can to utilize this board here as much as you possibly can. Maybe you'll focus on your specialists, which will allow you to do specific abilities and being able to flip them over and, and over again and continue using these bonus abilities. Or maybe the train car guy, the guy that places lots of train cars down with lots of flexibility, thus letting you move one space. It won't matter compared to the person who's jumping four spaces ahead of time because you have so many options available to you that you have the benefit of just moving slowly and not spending that mana on things that you might not think is, is as wise and instead spending them on extra actions for your train cars. So now you can activate three or four train cars because you're not moving too far aboard of, across this grid. This has a competitive nature, but because... Uh, the rulebook has a suggestion for the different types of captains you can play as. It can be a slightly less competitive. Like some specific train cars and captains will be utilizing these tiles that fall down and drop on resources and thusly eliminate people from gaining certain resources throughout the game and kind of making tiles barren, which is really nasty, but also really cool. You can kind of not play with that aspect. You can select awards that are more based on area control or, or where you need to go or objective collection, uh, completion and those, those kind of things. By the end of the game, this is a competitive game, and you are going to be trying to gather resources before somebody else. You will be moving train cars onto other players' train cars. Another little interesting rule that's kind of important is you can never place a train car on a space you already have a train car. At least not intentionally. It can happen, and only three cars can go to each space, and you can place one of your train cars on, in network, an adjacent player's train cars. So I can move a green car of mine into this orange player's car area, and that's just perfectly fine. So do, do note that. That's actually a really cool aspect of the game. That's how the competitive nature goes. I've got three rocks, she's got three rocks, but we share two of them, and we're trying to make it to the rock land so we can turn our stuff in before they do, and thusly they'll lose out on the ability to gain rocks. 
Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. And the options in this game are phenomenal. Um, the deluxe components are beautiful and brilliant. They're worth picking up. If you want a really nice version of the game, that's what I would suggest you do. But even the base game is great. If you're just dipping your toes into a game like this, just picking up Imperial on its own is gonna be a lot of fun. It comes with a nice big box, which I'm not even showing you here because it's so big. I'm just showing you the, 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 the top here. But it's really, really quite something. And all of the train cars are easy to understand. There's a ton of different symbols on all the characters and whatnot. And even if you don't know them or it's the first time you've played them, you'll have to look them up. But once you've seen it and you kind of understand it, you'll go, oh, I know what that is. Or I remember that symbol. Or what's this guy do? Times one, zero, zero, zero. Oh, well look, it's on my transfer board here. And these cost two, three, and four. And this one's for free. And it says times one. So I can do this one time for free. And you'll understand each of these guys and, and kind of get a grasp on them as you play the game. And eventually they'll come to be where you understand all the different aspects of the icons. And there is an icon reference as well, if you need to. You don't need to have a player reference as to how the game works because it's all on your game board. There's only two things you do move and activate or administrate. And if you get to the end of the line, deliver. And at the end of the day, deliver is all that matters in the game. So if you want a game that's a train game that has competitive aspects to it, area control, delivery, picking up stuff, trying to gather specific values and then appropriate them on your board, a little bit of tile placement, this game's got a lot of everything. Adding the Metro expansion is just more fun. It creates more players. You can play up to seven slash eight players in the game. If you want a crazy experience, you can add Metros that include new cities, making the game even larger and a little bit more robust, but nothing too complex to where you don't understand it or there's too much going on. And then the ability to play with additional Automata characters. Me and you versus two PCs? Yeah, I'd go ahead and try that as opposed to playing just by myself. And so it kind of opens up the ability to use the Automata deck for people who don't like just a single player experience. Overall, Imperial is an excellent game. I will be keeping this game. I have played this game for a long time. We actually have some, uh, not reviews of this game actually, but we did a playthrough of this game. We talked about it. We did a live stream or something like that uh, previously or an unboxing. Um, and it was really great back then. And with all the extra content, it's even better now. I highly suggest you pick up Imperial if you want something fun. Yes, I, I really like this game. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Imperial Spells and Steam with the expansion as above, so below, and the deluxe edition that gives you really nice quality components. If you're interested in any of this stuff, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and pick it all up. All right, guys, that's pretty much all I got for you. Make sure that you like, comment, and if we've earned your subscription, if you watch more than one of our videos here, do go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. If you've seen these videos and you're like, oh, it's, it's doing a pretty good job, just consider doing it. Even if you don't push the bell notification button, it does help us. We, we, it makes us want to keep making more and more videos. We have a live stream every Sunday and every Wednesday. Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. PST and whatnot. And uh, Sunday's the same time, but on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I'll look forward to gathering the most resources before you next time.